There we go. Hello, everyone. Uh, not a bunch of you, just a few of you. This is uh, very much as I uh, tried to hint strongly into uh, the chat, into the video description, into my Discord where I posted I was going live. This is very much an ad hoc live stream. There's one thing prepared, and that's to work on a little project on the table, and you just get to hang out and follow along uh, and watch and learn and possibly uh, watch things go awry. So I uh, appreciate those of you that have just po kind of popped in here. Uh, let's see, so far we have seen Mr. Landfill popped in and said hello. Matthew is here. Those are the only two folks I've seen in chat. Uh, looks like we've had more than a couple of you though. Looks like we've had five or six of you kind of hanging out. So I'm just gonna dig right into it and show you kind of what's on the bench and what I have planned. If you've been following along, some of you may have seen this device here. This is the CyberMed Medical Computer. And before I go too far, hang on, let me hit record because I'm thinking about using some of this later. So let me go ahead and hit record here. Okay, now we are recording. So what we have here is the CyberMed Medical Computer and I have probably spent hours on this thing trying to figure out what I want to do with it. I've known that I've wanted to uh, install possibly Linux or install uh, RetroArch and it's been very difficult because this is an old Celeron. What's really interesting about this device though is this is a touch screen so I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be using the touch screen for anything but it does have this really weird uh, it's not weird for a medical facility but it is a just a flat kind of keyboard uh, membrane keyboard but it's kind of nice because when you hit the keys you hear this audible click so you get this really great feedback that, to know it's working this is called the kiwi I think you can buy these by themselves even but they they took this kiwi membrane keyboard connected to the CyberMed with a Celeron in it. I think it's got four gigabytes of RAM inside. And this was connected to a much larger device that I think took some kind of sonograms or something like that. I'm not sure exactly what. So we had Windows on here. We tried to use Windows to install RetroArch. That was a disaster. Uh, that didn't work well at all. And then I had problems trying to break through the firmware so that I could install Linux. I did get Arch Linux installed on it. Then I tried to install RetroArch. That was a disaster. That wasn't working well. And what I found was, and let me see if I can pull this up. I didn't think to pull this up earlier. Again, this is not planned at all. What I found was a, uh, let me go ahead and do this. I can't think and talk at the same time. Uh, was a distribution called, and I'm going to flop on over here to my Mac. Uh, you don't need to see the playlist that's playing right now, but I am going to bring this over. Something called Bodicera Linux. And Bodicera Linux is generally uh, used to put on modern PCs and it allows you to play, it allows you to do some retro gaming. The issue I had was this device right here is a Celeron and it's a 32-bit processor. So a lot of uh, Linux distributions uh, are 64-bit now. Many have moved away from 32-bit. And so I just kept searching and searching and searching. And Matthew here says he's a big fan of Botticera, so he might be able to even help me through this thing if I have issues. But one of the things that was difficult was, again, finding a 32-bit distribution of either Linux uh, as a matter of fact, though, even the Windows distribution on this was kind of weird, and that's why it wasn't working well. But what's really cool is Bodicera Linux, as I was kind of playing on their site, I scrolled down here. Uh, actually, I went to the download page right here, and I scrolled down and look at all the devices that Bodicera Linux uh, will install onto. And this is really kind of cool. As a matter of fact, I have this device. I have a couple of these devices and I really want to try this on those devices. I have this right here. Uh, um, of course, I have Raspberry Pis out my ears. Uh, but as Matthew says in chat, oh, Raspberry Pi 4, I have one of those as well that I could use this on. Raspberry Pi uh, Zero 02, I have one of those. But if you scroll down to the very bottom down here, as I kept scrolling and scrolling, as a matter of fact, as I kept scrolling and scrolling, I thought they're never going to have a 32. I love this. I, I kind of want to play with one of these, this A12, A13 Pal Kitty. That looks like a lot of fun. But as you scroll down, 
you see that they, oh my goodness, they have an Intel Atom and old low powered devices. So that is uh, for PCs 20 years or older, and that is a 32 bit distribution, which works, should work right here on this device right here. So that's what we're trying. Now, what I have done, and I do have another view here, let's see so that you can see it. What I've done is I have installed Bodicera Linux, the image, so we're not gonna go through that today uh, during this uh, live stream, but that is installed on here. We are going to plug this into here, and we are going to see if, well, first of all, if I can install just the drive itself. Now I know I need, it should go this way because I need to see the light, there we go. And we're gonna turn this on and we're gonna see what happens. Now before we do that though, I do wanna pull this out and I wanna show you where we are at this point. Uh, so let me go to my top down view and I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on for now. And while we're doing that, let me check in chat and see if anybody's in there. Nobody's in there just yet, so same folks. Hey, uh, there are more people watching than are in chat though. So if you are in, uh, watching, uh, make sure that you pop in and say hello. So if you look, I did get Grub loaded on this, and right now it is booting uh, Arch Linux, or is it Debian Linux? I'm trying to remember. Now that I'm, I've confused myself, I think it's Arch Linux on here. And so Arch Linux is going to load. So what I thought is I would put Vice on there, or maybe put Ar Retro Arch, but again, that just became this huge disaster. And I wanted it to be something that would really boot directly into an emulator. That was my goal. Now I should have, if I'm not mistaken, there you go, you can see everything boot up here on the screen, which is kind of cool for you. I don't know how long we'll have that uh, uh, capability if we start playing around. Let's see if it actually shows the Linux install I have here. There we go. So it is RetroArch. Unfortunately, here's another thing that happened. Uh, I installed RetroArch. I had a username and password. I thought I set it to automatically log in. I have no earthly idea what it is. So I could go back to the previous live stream, scroll through there and I would find that out because I did put all that in there during the live stream. But that's not the point of this video today. The point of the video today is to get Bodicera Linux running. That's what we wanna do and see if we can do some retro gaming. So here's what we're going to do. Let me go back to my top view here. We are gonna plug this back in and now we are going to see if we can install it. I, I'm pretty sure it will run from here, uh, but what I wanna do is, that's gonna be a really slow access, it may take a while even for it to boot, is install it from here over to here onto here and then let it boot. So we're gonna get, that's what we're gonna try and get done today. So it's gonna be a lot of boring waiting, I'm sure, uh, but we'll try and sp you know spruce it up with some, maybe looking at the Bodice Era website, talking about some other things I'm trying to do. Uh, and, we, and we can also chat in the chat room. So let's go ahead now and let's go back to, uh, let's see, we need to reboot this thing. So how am I going to do that? I need to go back to this view and I need to take my little pointer here and I need to shut that down. So let's do a shutdown here. Are you sure you want to shut down? I do. Now this can get really tricky because I have a trackpad here and a trackpad here. So I've got to, got to remember what I'm doing. So let me go back over here so I can see and let's shut down. Okay, so we'll come back over here and we will catch, I believe it's F11. Let's see what it says here uh, for the BIOS boot options. Okay, let's start back on. And I think it's F11 if I remember. So we're gonna wait for F11 to the boot manager, there we go. Okay, so now we're in the boot manager. Now it's interesting, oh, that's interesting. There's two Kingston here. There's this Kingston RBU, which I think, it, yeah, this is, the, uh, this is the internal Kingston SSD. Amazingly, this old machine came with an SSD drive. I think that's amazing. But this Kingston D100G2, that is this one right here. You can see that 100G2. I think I can zoom in on that for you so you can see it. Just a little bit, see that, 100 G2. I'm gonna back that up just a little bit, right there, uh, and uh, eh, that's pretty good. And let's go ahead and come down here and let's boot from the data traveler, the Kingston data traveler. And let's keep those fingers crossed that we can actually boot from this USB with Bodicera Linux on there. All right, so let's see. Uh, still a couple of you hanging in there. Thanks for joining me. Now I am again, as I said, I am recording this. Oh, there, check that out. We got, we got, we got the screen. Look at that. So 
we're halfway there now let's see if it'll boot into the rest of it so that's really cool now I don't think uh, I, it's gonna show in my capture card let me see because I'm not it's probably you have to tell through the operating system to feed this HDMI port so I don't think that's probably working and of course it's blanked out let's hope that that blanking is good I know mr. landfill definitely keep our fingers crossed uh, when the logo went away that was a little scary for me for sure um, but we'll see if it comes back uh, but anyway I don't know if I can get video out on my HDMI to the screen we'll see as we get oh that that's good right says done that's good right uh, now I did do some uh, pre-preparing of this oh it's working you guys hear it that's pretty cool um, so it says it's playing the chiptune remix and I don't know if you all can hear that let me let me see if rock on I know right that's pretty cool isn't it? Uh, Bluetooth I'm not sure about Bluetooth this does have Bluetooth I don't know I would assume Matthew that this supports um, Bluetooth this uh, uh, distribution so uh, that's pretty neat okay so we're halfway there oh look it's even got a Commodore 64 is our very first thing which seems so appropriate for the channel doesn't it oh you can't hear it good mr. landfill I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it on for a minute so you can hear it hopefully it's not overpowering let's just take a listen for a minute I don't know if the control keys work for volume. Here's the volume control, but it doesn't appear to work. We may have to do some setting up of this, though, to get that working. I think if I do this, you'll get it sound better. This is dangerous. Is that better, Mr. Landfill? pretty good music actually um, now this doesn't have the back on it so while I have it I might as well show you here's here's the back right here these are all the components this is the uh, Kingston SSD that was built in it we saw we've got our uh, looks like uh, DRAM down here we've got our battery this actually does have a battery that so that's kind of cool that there's a battery in this uh, cyber med unit um, because I could it's it's charged it'll play I guess for about an hour or so uh, without power which is nice um, so that's kind of cool let's see if we can get rid of the annoying sound um, <laughs> not sure how to do that I've not done much with Botticera Linux but I'm going to assume that space yeah there we go uh, let's see if we can find sound settings actually the music's really good maybe we'll just turn it down enter oh there we go let's go ahead and pull it down there we go we'll just go ahead and take the I don't want the system volume because that's gonna take everything down we want the music volume right oh there you go I can hear it okay and let's go down to here and let's turn off maybe the front end music and let's escape there we go so that turned that off so that lets us at least do that now uh, what I want to do now running from here we need to get this installed on the device itself so let's see if we can find that um, uh, network settings I think I pre-prepared that I think that sh we should be connected um, let's it looks like enable Wi-Fi looks like we need to do that so let me do that okay now I am going to um, do this I'm gonna get off this screen for a minute and uh, because I don't want uh, people seeing me type or do a bunch of other stuff there we go and let me see if I can get this connected for us I don't know if you can hear it can you guys hear that keyboard as I touch the keys do you hear that little click 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 uh, let's see if that works and and okay all right now it looks like yep Matthew hears it perfect looks like I am connected to the network so that's good Wi-Fi enabled I can go back should go down here you can see I have Wi-Fi enabled which is good now let's see if we uh, here's the updates and downloads I don't really want to do that I don't want to do that to here but that's nice that that's working let's see if we can find an option somewhere that lets us install it on a on the computer let's see here's storage backup install here we go 
install Bodicera on a new disk. Now I'm going to assume that that's going to let us get Bodicera installed on this CyberMed. So we'll give it a shot. Hey, we got a few, a few more folks have joined us. If you are watching, please jump into chat. Uh, Mr. Landfill and Matthew are lonely in chat, so they'd love to see you there. Uh, we are uh, trying to get Bodicera Linux installed on this little Atom processor CyberMed. So far, it, the, the responsiveness is really good. And I actually have to say, this keyboard is, seems like, hey, Dan, good to see you. Uh, good to have Dan here. Thanks, Dan, for popping in. Uh, Dan, hopefully you got caught up with what I just said, what we're trying to do. Uh, but I am really digging this keyboard. In some ways, this membrane keyboard just seems right for this distribution uh, with a retro computer. So uh, we'll come back to that. Let's see if we can get this installed uh, on a new disk. Uh, oh, here we go. Select target device. Uh, and it also has select architecture. So we'll check that out. Let's see, target device first. Hey, there it is. There's that uh, 52.9 gigabyte internal SSD, which still amazes me that this 15 plus year old CyberMed came with it. SSD, probably really pricey. I'm sure they charged for it, this being a medical computer. Let's go ahead and hit that. The target architecture, now this is interesting. Uh, ooh, man, Ugh. what do I do here? Now this seems, oh, droid, let's see what, pal key, okay, so looks like we go down here and we select x86 would be my guess because this is an x, this is a Celeron. I'm gonna pause right here those of you in chat, would you agree that this is the option I need? I will give you just a second to weigh in because this is where I love to crowdsource uh, help. So that's that's great. So let's see uh, what you guys say about, is that the target architecture? I, I have to assume it is, right? x86, I didn't see Adam, uh, but man. So uh, I do not know. I know it's tough, isn't it? Let me see, I don't think, I don't think Adam was on here, right? At the top, let me go up here. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, Matthew. It just seems like it would automatically know because I'm running it right now. It would know which, which. yeah, I'm gonna go with that one. It doesn't have anything else. So we're gonna give it a shot. What's the worst that'll happen is it'll install and not be right and we have to do this again. So let's, let's give that a shot. Let's enter. All right, and then are you sure? I love this interface. This interface is really nice. Uh, Bodicera Linux is, oh, I'm already thinking this is better than RetroArch, which I think RetroArch actually runs in Bodicera Linux, but you, you get my point. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit enter here and uh, see what happens. Ooh, error, check the system logs. An error occurred, oh man. See, this is what I was afraid about this thing. I wonder if I have to, hmm, let me try something here. Let's try target architecture. I'm, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and put it on here and I'm just gonna try something. Yeah, invalid parameters. So you do have to have a selection. I may have to go to some uh, interesting though. It says check the logs. How am I gonna check the logs? Let me make sure I didn't see something here. Tinkerboard, TV box, Vim. Uh, F1, thank you. F1, oh yeah, uh, yeah, we'll give that a shot, thank you. Um, let me just see, let's, uh, okay. So F1, now we'll have to get out of here, I'm sure. Oh, there you go, thank you, oh, that's nice, perfect. Okay, so then the logs, let's see if we can find out where those logs, let me make sure I'm not um, broadcasting this out. I don't think we are, yeah, no signal, so nothing there out so that you guys can see that better. I could probably pop in or maybe a way to uh, do that. Let me uh, let me go back here. Well, I'll tell you what, let's, uh, let's go ahead and, I'm assuming F1 gets me back in. It does not. Uh, file, close window. It's one of the things, uh, Matthew, that you're right, the, uh, I love it has its built-in file manager. Let's see if we can um, route this through Let's see, let's go to system settings. Let's see if we can do something with video here. Here's video output. Um, do, 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 LVS sets auto. This is that one. This is that one, I think. Let's see what happens. And escape. And escape. Let's see if that gets me. Yeah, it doesn't. Okay, you guys, unfortunately, for now, are gonna have to just look at this with me. Uh, let's go back to F1. Let's see if we can find those logs. 
I assume those are going to be under system. And I don't remember, did it say? There we go. Um, brr, 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 brr. Uh, hey, Chris, good to have you. Uh, hi, guys. Logs are probably in. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, here's logs right here. There we go. Let's see what it says here. Uh, that's just the config. We want to get out of that. We want that install one, I think. Let's see what it says here. There we go. There's the install log. Got to be quick on the draw. Uh, exit code 256. That is not much help. That really is not much help. Um, oh, that's working. Okay, good. Let me see here. Let me check this log again. Uh, Eric, uh, okay, so here, oh, look, it's got all of the things that we changed. Uh, front, bottom, da, 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 nothing there. Let's see. Let's go back in and see if we can figure out. Come on, we got to get this installed on the internal SSD. I wonder if I need to go back into Grub and um, kill. Oh, wait, is there a way? Wait a minute, is there a way to, do I need a for, because there is a, there is a Linux distribution on there. I wonder if it needs to be a fresh, um, hmm, interesting. Uh, let's see. Chris, uh, does it need to be updated before you run the install? Oh, maybe you're right. Ah, oh, that's a good, that's, maybe, maybe you're right. Let's close the window. Let's give that a shot because it did give us the opportunity to do that, didn't it, Matthew? So, no harm, no foul. Let's give that a shot. Updates and downloads. Let's try that. Uh, auto update is on. Start update. Let's see what we get here. All right, and I'm gonna see, let's keep an eye. There's a little light right here. We'll see if it's writing to that. Looks like, really update? Well, yeah, really, really, I want to update. There we go, we're getting some activity on here. Uh, error occurred, here we go. URL, oh, did you see that? We got an error, so this is what I was afraid of. Yeah, uh, update, uh, upgrades, not available. So something's, something's going on. So they're not updating this 32-bit version anymore. So that's the problem. So, huh, this just got trickier. Now I'm, be, I'm beginning to wonder what this means for me. I don't want to have to run it from a USB drive all the time uh, because it doesn't uh, keep the settings and all that other business. Um, so let me think through this for a minute. Let me show you what, what my ultimate goal was. I think you might enjoy this. Uh, if I go over here, I had this old iCade. Have you guys seen these back in the day? You'd put an iPad in there, you load some software. And I thought this thing right here, if we could get this installed and rotate it, man, that would fit perfectly right in here. Uh, with a little bit of modification. And then this is uh, Bluetooth, which that was the other piece, Bluetooth. But I think I can hardwire these too. Uh, but then I would use these and I would make that an all-in-one unit. That was kind of the goal. It seems like that could have been a lot of fun. That's kind of what I'm trying to do. Uh, so let me keep packing on it. I've got a little bit of time here. I don't have anywhere I need to be. So maybe I can do a little research online too. Let me check. Uh, let me try one more thing. I'm going to see if I can... I don't think, storage device, you don't think you have to change that, do you? Because that just seems, if I do internal, um, install on a new disk, we might go to that security here in a minute and check that out. Uh, let's select. this again. Let's select our architecture. Uh, Dan says, currently setting up uh, my new Clockwork Pi U console. So the stream, oh, don't, hey, no, no spoilers, uh, Dan. I have one of those Clockwork just shipped one out to me. So uh, I'll be, uh, 
I'll be taking a look at that myself. So no spoilers on that. It looks like a, just a blast. Of course, I have the this one right here, the Clockwork Dev Term. Do you have one of those, Dan, as well, I assume? So uh, th this was a blast. I really enjoyed this, but I'm looking forward to the smaller form factor. So that'll be fun. Um, uh, let's see, Matt says, if you're dead set on getting it installed, you could yank the drive out, externally mount it somewhere else like your Apple, and then flash the Bodicera ISO drive. Oh, that might, that might be an option. Um, trying to figure out how I might do that. Oh yeah, I have an adapter for that. I could plug that in and f flash it. So, oh, that's, you know, that's interesting. Could I, so then I take that. Yeah, maybe that's what I'll do. Hey. That, that actually, uh, do I still have the, I, where's the ISO? The ISO's on the machine in there, I believe. Uh, but I could, I could, I could uh, quickly remote to that machine over there, grab it, put it over here. Um, and yeah, I could, and then, and then use, yeah, you, there you go, I got you. And then, yeah, okay. I see what you're saying. Let me let me try this first. But yeah, I'm I'm, I'm working through it in my head. Uh, but I could, and it wouldn't it wouldn't be that big of a pain because I think I have everything I need. I think my adapter is over there. I have to just find everything. So that could be kind of interesting. Let me try this right now. Are you sure we're gonna say yes? Uh, oh, what did I just do? Did I just mess that up, guys? Because I wasn't paying attention, probably. All right, let's go. Uh, nope, that's not what I wanted. I want. System settings, there we go. Uh, install. Um, target device is, let's do that again. Yeah, you're right, because if I do it directly from the ISO image, it'll already have the architecture because we know it works based on the ISO I have. Yeah, yeah, that actually, the, Matthew, that, that's brilliant. That probably should have been what I did to begin with. I think that's where we're headed. But uh, hey, let me just see what we get here. Try one more time here. Oh, did it again. I do not like this. Um, I've got to remember enter, Stephen. Enter. Enter is what you're looking for. Hey, but the menus are getting better, so that's good. I like at least that I can go up. There we go. Are you sure? Yes. Now install. There we go. Uh, okay, so that didn't that didn't work. Check the system log. I like your idea. I think we're going to try that. I just think that that's going to be easier. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to shut this bad boy down. We're going to do it safely uh, because I might need to come back to this stick at some point. Let's uh, do a shutdown system. Yes. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, hold that thought for just a minute. I've I got a few things I need to grab, so I'm going to regale you with a little background music. And let's see what we have running here. We have, uh, I think we had, where is it? Um, there we go, VLC. And we've got a little uh, retro music going on here. So let me go ahead, oh, it was already running. So let me go ahead and pop this over to here. Let me pop this over to <laughs> here. I'll get right here in a minute, guys. Uh, and let me go ahead and pull this up. And let me do this. And I'll grab a few things and be right back. Hang in there, uh, tell all the friends in chat when they pop in, I'm coming right back.
All right, there we go. I am back, and here's what I have. Um, didn't take too long, I, I'm surprised I had a lot of stuff here. So I do have one of these little guys right here. Uh, this will be what we'll plug the SSD into. Uh, that just happened to be handy because I was working on another project, which is nice. Uh, and then I need to grab that. Uh, so let me go to my Mac view here. I have a di little different, I have, I have this Mac view so you can see it. It gets blown up. It's a, a lower resolution than a regular screen so you can see everything. And you can see right here I have this. So what I'm going to do is I am going to transfer that to my local downloads. I hope I have enough room on this drive. I thought we we're going to put that right here. So what I'm basically doing is I have another Mac in there, another room over uh, another Mac Mini in the room next door, which I use for some live streams. You've seen me. As a matter of fact, the last two times I did the oh here we go you can see it's copying over pretty quickly my network's doing pretty well um, <laughs> your streams probably going down right now as we're doing this uh, but anyway I have another Mac over there and I use it for live streams and I and I uh, did the other two CyberMed live streams from that location so just a little change today so I'm just popping it over I probably could have done something with I don't know burning it directly but uh, let's copy it over and make sure we have it all right, so this is the downloads folder from the remote Mac. I'm going to go ahead and eject that one. Let's get that one off of there. And uh, now we're going to come over here to our downloads on here. And you'll see Botticera right there. So that's what we're going to try and burn to the SSD in here. So let's get to that SSD. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and unplug just to be safe. And let's flip this over. And this should, because I was playing around with it, there are any screws in here, it should just pull right out. There we go. So we'll take that and we'll put that. Oh boy. Yeah, let me grab just something that. There we go. And then we're going to flip this back over here. All right, that's good. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Uh, hey Jamie, uh, whoa, about missed, uh, about missed this. Oh, you haven't missed a whole lot. Um, but we've got some really good things going on. I think Matthew had a great idea and we're trying out his idea right now. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this USB uh, see that here. I'm going to plug this into, now let's not plug it in yet. Let's go ahead and get our hard drive connected first. And we're going to plug this in. This is ridiculous. Look at this. Uh, this was built for an old five and a quarter inch bay. Check it out. That, that is actually quite hilarious, isn't it? Uh, but hey, this is why you don't throw things away. Uh, I've had this for years. Gosh, I don't know how long I've had this, but I use it. would use it for portable drives and stuff. So now I'm going to plug this in to the USB. And I, I think I can show you what's going on here. Let me see. I'm not sure if this gets everything. But here's my desk right here. Oh, yeah, you do have everything. So we're going to plug this in right here to my USB drive. And then we're going to plug this into some power over here that I have conveniently located. And hopefully nothing smokes. OK, let's go back over to our Mac and see if it recognizes anything. Now, you're not going to be able to see it because I am uh, doing it separately. Uh, is there a power switch on here? I think there is. There is power. So um, just to show you that and keep everything consistent, there's a little power button right here. I need to turn that on. There we go. Now it's live. Now, let's see what's happening on my Mac over here. It looks like. Nothing is showing up. Uh, not even a, you need to initialize this drive. Um, so I don't know, we're gonna, we're gonna try it anyway. So let me come over here to the Mac and let's go ahead and run uh, Etcher. And we're gonna see if Etcher recognizes it. So here's what we have. We're gonna select our Drive. Oh, I need to get rid of that. That's not good. Hey, oh no, what happened? Did I just close? I did. Rats. Sorry about that. Hang on, guys. I've got to uh, come back in here live streaming. There we go. I have to break out uh, my chat window. Don't worry about the uh, messed up screen. It'll come back here in just a minute. I accidentally closed a window that I should not have closed. And there we go. That'll fix that for us. Uh, okay, so now we're back. So let me clear that and uh, let me scroll down here. Um, let's see. Okay, so now back out of here. There we go. 
And where were we? Uh, oh yeah, I want to get rid of this window without actually closing the Chrome browser because I'm using it in the background to do some things. All right, let's click here. Um, flash from file, there we go. And we want to go to our downloads, which is, where's my downloads? Oh, there it is right there, okay. Uh, and then we're going to pick Bodicera and open that. We're going to select our target and uh, ooh, nothing is showing up. That's interesting. So this thing is not showing up. I don't know why. So there's a problem, Matthew. We've got to get this showing on the Mac and this should not be a problem because I have used this before. So let me try something else here. Check all my cables, make sure everything's connected. Oh, there we go, there we go, there we go. You can't see it, well I think, can I show it to you? I got this, I didn't get this last time. So we are going to ignore that. So that's perfect, we want to ignore. And we're gonna select a target, there we go. External 64, perfect. And now we're going to, uh, yep, 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 select. And we are going to flash and see what happens. Let's do it, here we go guys. Uh, I gotta type my password to allow this. Let's do that over here. It is flashing time. Check us out. We are decompressing. So how much fun is this? Is this a great hey Evil Jay, good to have you. Uh I just saw you pop in, so thanks for popping in. Uh you're a little let me get you caught up. We are uh, flashing, so you know we're waiting a little bit of time. It's actually going pretty quickly. I'm kind of surprised, but we are flashing the SSD that was in here. If you've seen any of my live streams with this, I've been messing around with this thing, trying to get some kind of retro installation on here because what I want to do is install it on, not that view. I want to install it. Where's, which one? Oh yeah, it's, no, yeah, this. I want to get that in here and then connect this and make this a standalone unit. And it just seems like the CyberMed is the perfect form factor. I think, I haven't really done a lot of measurements, but I think I could sneak it in there, especially if I can rotate it and get it that way. It would make just the coolest little desktop, uh, tabletop thing, so pretty cool. Uh, so that's what we're trying to do. Here we go. Uh, oh, you don't want that view. You want to see how we're doing on flashing. Look at that, finishing. Matthew, you could be the genius of the day. Thanks for that. I did. Didn't even think about that and uh, actually tried to do uh, something similar to get Linux on this device, which is why I kind of had all this. Uh, hey, look, it says it's done. Shall we Shall we, Shall we? we play a game? To say uh, uh, the old war game saying, let's close that. And then what I'm going to do, gentlemen, is I'm going to come back down over here to the top down. And uh, let me go ahead. <laughs> yeah, you are. You are the genius of the day. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. And I'm going to go ahead and unplug everything. And let's leave that handy. Okay, so then we're going to pull out the SSD right here. Okay. And then we're going to flip this over. Dan, how's that U console come along? Micro console, whatever. Pico, con whatever, <laughs> the, uh, the the clockwork console, there we go. Let me get this plugged in here. It looks like this goes this way. Put that back in there. All right, and then we're gonna flip it over. Talk about the hard way of doing things, but this could just be, this could be great, guys. This, this may just make my day. Now, we need to pull this out. Let's go ahead and get rid of this. We don't want that right now. All right. Updating the Linux packages. All right, good, good deal. Which, uh, hey, uh, Dan, which uh, U console did you get? Which um, processor? Did you get the uh, Raspberry Pi, the uh, AO6 uh, with their, uh, which, which one did you get? Uh, I don't know what I'm getting. I wish I could tell you which one I'm getting. I do not know because they are uh, sending that to me. Uh, to review for them, which I'm looking forward to that. That's, so that's kind of neat. I didn't have to pay for it. It's on its way. So uh, they liked my uh, last video I did on the dev term. So they said, hey, do you want the U console? And I said, yeah, I'd love to see the U console or the micro console or whatever we're calling it. Uh, so, oh, good. Got the Raspberry Pi. That's kind of what I'm hoping they sent me. I want the Raspberry Pi. 
Um, so that's the one I'm looking for. All right, let's turn this thing on. You guys ready? Let's, uh, hey, fingers crossed in the chat room for me, please. Okay, let's get those fingers fingers crossed. Uh, Wi-Fi only, yeah, that's I, that's kind of what I'm hoping that they said. Did, did you already have the Raspberry Pi or did it come with the package is my next question. I feel bad for you all. I'm about to pop a fresh gooseberry pie. Oh my gosh, Matthew, I would love a good gooseberry pie. Let's turn this thing on and see what we get while Matthew bakes a gooseberry pie. Oh, came with a pie. Well, that's good. That means that they had some, which is good. All right, it's booted. It's going right in. Let's see. Let's let's keep our... Now, we know it's going to have to do some setup stuff because it did before. Hey, you can kind of see my little camera right there. You can probably see me if I get it up there. Oh, that's the top of my head. You don't want to see that. Holy cow. Uh, compute module. That's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, absolutely. It's the compute module. Um, is anything happening? Let me, let me unplug the external HDMI. Uh, I don't know that anything happened. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Hey, 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 folks. We might be cooking with gas. I don't think this had anything to do with it, honestly. I think I just was impatient. So we will let her go. Oh, and as a reminder for those of you out there, this is cool because this actually has about power. Well, yeah, it's Good point. It doesn't need the power cord because there's a battery in here, which is really cool, uh, which is one of the reasons I'm excited about this. Um, and I can show you that battery again. There you go, right there. That's all battery. All that green right there is all battery. But I am going to plug it in because I don't know how healthy this battery is. So let's get power on there. Thank you, Matthew. Oh, we have that music. <laughs> oh, gentlemen, we have Botticera Linux on the CyberMed. Oh my gosh. Uh, it is running throttled because of that. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, check that out. All right, let's let's uh, let's let's do that sound thing that we did earlier. This is not, and it it is faster too because it's uh, accessing the internal SSD. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm still not going to get all this other stuff, but let's go to system settings. Uh, let's go ahead and I want to check my video output here. Can I? I don't know if this is going to do anything for me. I was going to see if I can get it. I may have to check and see if there's a way to get it. Let's see if it shows up. It does not. So you guys, unfortunately, right now are just going to use this, which is fine because I don't ever plan to use it on here. It's it's all about this screen, and it actually is not a bad screen. If you look, it's got pretty good view angles on it, uh, so that's not bad. Let me go ahead and go back in here and just put auto. It's fine the way it is. Uh, audio output, everything seems to be working. Overclock. I can't overclock, can I? Yeah, that's what I thought. All right, so the internal, the storage device is internal, which that's good. So it should know that. Um, let's go back up to, got power saving mode, Cody settings. I'm just gonna take a quick look. Oh, look at that. Cody at start, I don't I don't think we wanna do that. We just want to, we don't wanna mess with anything there. Let me go back here. Let's go to uh, sound settings. There it is. Let's go back to our sound settings. And let's turn that down. Oh, let me just turn it up so you guys can hear it, though. So I do think if I decide to uh, install it in here, it would need some different speakers, some, something with a little deeper bass. I've got enough room in this that I could maybe put something, a couple of speakers on the side here and get some bass out of there. That's kind of a, that'd be kind of a cool plan, uh, kind of what I'm looking at. All right, let's go ahead and take it down though for now. There we go. Uh, show overlay when volume changes. Uh, yeah, we want to do that. Front end music. Um, we're going to turn that off. Oh, I did it again. Gosh, got to get. Oh, oh, look at that. Games. Uh, we'll come back to that. Um, let me come back here. Let me come down to my sound settings. I'm going to take the volume back up. to about 70% seem good. And then I'm going to turn off the front end music. Enter, Stephen, not space. There we go. And then when I go back, here's navigation sounds. Those could be good because that'll help give me feedback with uh, the keyboard, which is gives me a little feedback, but it would be nice just to have that. Oh, look, I need to clean my keyboard. I have to figure out what that means and how I clear that. But I'll have to do some research on this Kiwi. All right, let me go. Let's, let's go back. All right, there we go. Now the sound's off. 
Uh, if you end up hopping back onto your SSD, you might want to swap cameras beforehand. Uh, oh, how come? How come, Matthew? What'd I do? Um, I feel bad. Um, what did I do, Matthew? Did I show something I shouldn't have? Oh, no. Oh, just privacy. Okay. All right. Yeah, no, you're right. I've been trying to be very careful about those things. So I thought maybe I did something. Good news is I'm probably, I think my plan for this live stream is, I don't know. I may just leave it live if I don't do anything stupid. Uh, I, I do, I am recording it. I, I may pull some shorts out of it too. That could be fun. But I was thinking about maybe editing this, but I don't think I will. I think everything's going kind of cool and people may want to follow along, right? Let's go ahead and quit. Now, the next thing I want to do, oh, controller settings. Let's see what we have here. Um, let's see, okay, configure a controller. So here's what I want to do. I don't want one of those big controllers. I would like to use the C64. The problem is, oh, here you go, guys. Uh, somebody asked about pairing a Bluetooth controller. You can do that, uh, so that could be fun. Uh, but I think, because I have a full keyboard on here, I just want to see if I can get this working. Let's see if we can figure out how to do that. I know these work. It's a good thing we got rid of that uh, USB. This is the only USB, or that USB drive. This is the only USB port I have. All right, that's in there. Let's just see if it recognizes it. It does not. <laughs> or maybe, hang on, let me get out of this menu first. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't recognize it. So we are going to have to do some setup here. So let me go ahead and go back in and controller settings. And I just want to see if we can get a C64 game working. There's two installed on here. I saw that, but I'd like to see what it is. Let's configure our controller. You're going to configure your controller if you have only direction. If you only have joystick, configure the direction keys. Okay, got it. Uh, it says, oh, it says gamepad detected. There we go. Hold a button on your device to configure it. There we go. Oh, check it out. It says the 64 joystick. Oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, up. Down. This is crazy, folks. Up, down. Left. Right. Now, this is the thing. I think I'm going to go start, select. Although this kind of looks like, okay, we got, we got options here. Um, we're not going to be able to do A, B, and I don't remember how you don't do anything. We're going to have to figure that out too. Hey, Matthew, if you remember how you don't make a selection on this, let me know. I know there's a way. Uh, I think for select, I'm going, or for start, I'm going to do the first one. For this one, we'll do this one. Um, and we're not using any of these uh, right now. So I'm not sure what you do. Can you just... Oh, there we go. Okay, got it. So we'll just go down here. And hotkey, I'm going to use this one for the hotkey. I don't know that it'll do anything, but uh, that's button two, and then we'll press OK. All right, so that is configured. The C64 joystick is configured. Again, it's not the best joystick. I just want to play around with it and see how it goes. And then, uh, is it working? Oh, look at that. It's working. Nice. Let's go ahead and escape. Uh, let's escape and let's see if it works. All right. Hey, we have controls. Check it out. That's not bad at all. Okay. And there were two C64 games in here, which was really interesting. So uh, I think I have to do this select. Yep. Oh, no, wait. That's the menu. Let me go back. Okay. So I probably should set up a few things. Oh, that, that's interesting. So I can do that. But I can't do that. Is it this here? Nope. So I'll have to make, I'll have to figure out a way. I'll have to fix, fix those. So but let's not worry about that. Let's go ahead and it's not making a selection here either. So that's not good. Oh, there we go. Uh, nope. That's, I don't want that one. So let me go escape that. Okay. I got some work to do there, but I can do this and we can get in there. So you guys want to try Super Mario Brothers or the Great Giana Sisters? Oh, that's interesting because the Great Giana Sisters, I played the Mega 65 version in my last live stream. So that's pretty cool. Let me see what you guys are doing in chat. I'm sorry, I feel like I'm neglecting you. Um, let's see what is going, oh gosh, you guys have been busy, I'm sorry. Oh heavens, I'm definitely not that. Uh, you console, updating, okay, I'm up to there. Um, talked about the Gooseberry Pie. 
Batteries not included though. Sent you a link on these. Oh, thank you for that. Uh, I do have, is it not the same batteries, Dan, as the one for the the um, dev term? So let me know. Uh, power cord, we did that. So I got that caught up. Uh, if you end up hopping back uh, into your SD, oh yeah, we already talked about that. So I'm not too far behind. Okay, I just thought there was a lot going on. I think you hold a button down for a long time, we'll skip it. Uh, yeah, I think that was, oh, that's right. Yeah, I think I remember that. Uh, there we go. Continue. Currently watching the stream on the, you are not watching this stream on the U console. Get out of here. Send me a picture of that. That is cool. And is it working? I mean, is it is it pretty stable? That is pretty sweet. Uh, oh, there you go. So you just did. Thank you, Dan. Look forward to that. That's pretty cool. I can't wait to see that. Uh, I do not have Discord fired up right now, so I do not have that. Let me, uh, I also, what happened to my, I want to see, uh, da, 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 da. Uh, oh, I don't have I need a new window. I must have closed my window. Let me see what we have going on here. Bear with me just a minute. We'll see. Uh, by the way, make, make your vote for your game. Which one do you want me to give a shot first? Uh, let me check my... I'm trying to check here and see how my stream is. Have you guys had any jitters or anything? Are we still good? Still rock solid, I hope? Um, there we go. Yeah. yeah. We've had some viewers. We had about 26 folks pop in here, which is kind of cool for an ad hoc. Works great. Wow, amazing. I can't wait to see that. Uh, so super. Let me go ahead and clear this. Uh, I will, uh, folks, if you want to see that, Dan, if you don't mind, would you, would you be okay if I put that on uh, my community tab in YouTube so folks can see that. I'll also put it in my Discord for those of you that are uh, members of the channel and a part of the Discord, so you'll see that too. All right, let's see if we can clear this out, and uh, here we go. I am going to, I am going to, I'm going to play, I think I'm going to play this. So let's see what happens. I love this. The very first thing that pops up is the C64. If this works, everything's fine. Um, Ah, it didn't work. So now this makes me wonder, do I have to install ROM? So this this seems like I'm going to have to do some research here. Let's see if we can just get Super Mario Brothers working. Or maybe the both of these require a RAM expansion unit. Maybe the REU is not set up properly in here. So we'll see if we can just get any game playing for now. Okay, those are not working. I really wanted to do a retro game. Let's see if we have anything under Game Boy Advance. There's one game in there. Let's see what we have. Let's see if we get Space Twins working. If this works... I'm really, I'm going I'm to have to spend some time in Botticera Linux to figure out how all this works. But I'm wondering now if I have to bring my own ROMs. Oh, no. This one says dedicated to P, rest in peace. Looks like it's, let's see if we maybe hit here. Oh, there we go. All right. Hey, check it out. Man, that actually looks pretty good, doesn't it? Ninewires.com. So this must be a modern game. Looks good on the screen, though, doesn't it? It's taking a while. I don't know if it's working or not. And I think to go back to the main menu, I have to press start and select at the same time. Oh, there we go. I think everything is okay. Base looks good. Let's get a little bit closer. Okay. There is sound. I probably should have turned that up a little bit. There we go. Let's get to the game. Oh, that's pretty cool. Check that out, guys. Oh, that's nice. Press start. Here we go. It seems, I don't know, I don't know if it's, if this game was slow anyway, but man, it seems really slow. And I don't feel like my fire button is working either. Although, who knows, they may, oh. Yeah, this is really slow. So I don't know if that's the processor or if I've got some tweaking to do. 
But the, yeah, the, the, my button's not working either. I'm dead. <laughs> I think we need to work on the controller. All right, so at least I know that. So escape, what does escape do? Escape get me out? It does, all right, perfect. Let's go back here and let's see if there's just something else we can try one more. Let's try something a little less. Let's do uh, 2040, yeah, that, that, sounds, that sounds boring, but we'll load her up. It does seem very slow though. This may not be the device for this. It may just be a little too slow, unfortunately. Let me go back down here for you. New game, well that loaded up pretty quick, but All right, well, see, that's working pretty well, huh? So it may just be the different systems, as long as I'm willing probably to work on some, uh, let me hit escape, uh, some slower systems. I'll probably remove some systems. I'm never gonna try some of the systems that are on here. I really want this for 8-bit only. That's the plan, is to only install 8-bit. Like this PC Engine, uh, that's not gonna happen. But <laughs> look at that, there are two games in there, uh, and I'm sure both of those would be horrible on this yeah, let's just try and see. I'm I, now I'm just curious. Let's see how bad this is. The only good 2048 is exactly evil, Jay. I agree. This whole 2048 thing, yeah. Now this is 2013. Let's see what this how this runs. It's based on a ZX Spectrum game. That's interesting. Oh wait, that's 2084. Well, it's the same thing though, right? Uh, just like a TurboGrafx-16, right? Not quite, yeah, not even close. Um, I, should I do something here? Oh, there we go. It's nice having a keyboard. If I could figure out somehow how to get that keyboard on here, mount that maybe sloped here, just so you have it, that could be nice too. Uh, so there's there's an idea for me. And, and this has been in gestation for 10, 15 years I've had this thing. So who knows if or when it'll ever get done. Push run. Yeah, so this button's not working. Why isn't this button working? Oh, something happened. What was that? Press run, good luck. <coughs> we'll try that again, here we go. Yeah, the sound, I don't know if you can hear the sound, but it's, it's stuttering. Yeah, it, it does look good, but it's, stuttering and see how slow everything is so that's not gonna work all right let me try one last thing and then I'm probably gonna shut her down guys uh, would love any last thoughts that you might have uh, put those in chat before I get out of here I need to go upstairs and uh, tend to retro pup who's taking a nap right now so that's good and um, I'll, give you, I'll give you guys a little update of what I've been up to today too before I get out of here this is ports I don't want that here's Super Nintendo so there's I guess the Commodore 64 is the only one on there can I, um, let's see, if I do space, will that let me change? Oh, here we go. Um, sometimes there's a way that you can change the settings for, is that in here maybe? Let's see, here's our menu. Um, that's Cody settings. Let's see what game settings is. Games ratio. Pixel perfect, I like that. Latency, retro arts, retro achievements, net play, missing BIOS. Yeah, I just need, to, I think I'm gonna need to do some um, some check. Let's see, you can hold down some button while highlighting a game and it'll open up options. Okay, let me check that. Uh, let's see if we can hold down. Okay, that, when I held down the this button right here, which is start, this came up. But I don't think that's, what we're looking for. No, let me try a different one. Oh, here we go, that was options, okay. So let's see, advanced game options, emulator, oh, here we go, we can pick our emulator. So here's auto, so that's good. Let's see if we have, here's our core, game ratio, video mode, Rewind, auto says shaders, decoration, latency reduction. Uh, it'll pop open a game specific options to select a different emulator. Yeah, so I just found that. I don't see anything though about like, um, both of those games require a, I can just choose Vice, but each one of those requ uh, core, 
I'm sorry, I'll finish the sentence here in a minute, require the RAM expansion unit to run. Uh, you know what we could do is we could just, um, this is all, I don't know, if, uh, oh, I have a USB drive, I could do, no, nah, that's gonna be much, too much time. What I need to do is just find a .c64 image, drop it over. If I were prepared, I'd have one here and ready to go. Uh, but, and what I would do is come over here with our, uh, let me get out of here, hit F1, come in here and then uh, use, uh, here's a share area here. It looks like we can bring in some ROMs. So what I need to do is just pop a bunch of ROMs right in there, if it's gonna let me in there. For some reason, it's not letting me in. There we go. And then uh, I can put some ROMs in here and uh, do that. So how do I, um, can I get this thing online on my network too so I can just pop them over? So here's all, this looks like these are all, you can see a little flashy uh, on the screen, but uh, you can see all the different systems it supports here. That's a bunch, wow. And I think I will, I think I'll only, let's see which ones, if I were to choose right now, it would be, I'm not gonna do Amiga on this thing, that's not what I'm looking for. I might do some Apple II games, that could be fun, Atari 800 definitely, 2600 for sure, I could populate that pretty expansively. Atari 7800, uh, C64, definitely wanna put those in there. Let's see if we can get in there. Everything's running kinda of slow. I may check too and see if there's some tweaks I can make to make this thing run faster. There we go. And you can see right here we have uh, Mario Brothers and the Greg Giannis scissors. So um, we would do that. Uh, probably DOS, I don't know, maybe ColecoVision, now that could be fun. Uh, what other, Game Boy, probably not. Um, not much of a game, I want things. And television could be fun, could be fun to put a few on there. Uh, main, probably want to throw in Main to do that. MSX, N64, nope, 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 nope. Uh, da, 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 da. Scum VM could be fun. Uh, is, is ZX on here? Yeah, ZX Spectrum ZX81. So those are the ones that I'll, I'll focus on are those eight bits. So, all right, well, there we go. There's a fun hour. Hey guys, thanks for uh, spending some time with me. Um, really appreciate you popping in the chat just uh, to, get, to get caught up here. Let's just see what we had. We had uh, six uh, concurrent, we have six viewers right now, but we've had up to 28 folks popping in and out. This isn't everybody's cup of tea, right? Uh, but it is fun and I really appreciate all of you. Just to let you know what I've been up to, where is it? This has arrived from the lovely folks over at Cloner Alliance. Again, this was a nice gift that they sent to me. I use the Cloner, I can't show it to you because I'm using it. I use the Cloner Alliance Box Pro for everything. Uh, any video you see me do, I'm running the Mega 65 uh, or any retro computers, I'm always running it through this. But this is really cool because this has an on-screen, or it has a display, and it has the ports you need for retro computing. So what they did is they said, hey, this is, basically designed for DVD and VHS recording. Uh, yeah, you can do some retro gaming, but would you mind showing it on your channel and how you can capture some retro computing? I said, I'd be happy to do that. So I prepared a video, it's gonna be about 15 minutes. I'm about, um, I'd say halfway, uh, yeah, halfway through every, no, three quarters through everything, about a quarter of the way through editing. All the B-roll, everything's done, I'm putting it all together uh, using uh, DaVinci Resolve, and I, I was so excited about using DaVinci Resolve today. I sent Jamie a, a direct message on X and said, hey, I just tried out the new transcription editing mode on DaVinci Resolve where it transcribes your video and then you edit the transcription and it takes out all the pauses, any words you don't want. It is fabulous, folks. I, I think at least 50% uh, dropped my editing time by 50%. That was pretty fabulous. So you will see my first video using that technique on this. That will probably drop this weekend, maybe before. I might release it on Wednesday. I might get it done by Wednesday. I'm probably gonna work on it a little bit more tonight, uh, but it's got some really fun B-roll behind it and you really get to see, uh, is this a device that you want next to you uh, or connected to one of your retro computers? I'm, I'm kind of digging it. It does a lot of things and I won't spoil it, but. Be sure to check out that video if you get a chance. Cloner Alliance for sure. That's what it's called, Mr. Phil. Mr. Landfill, Mr. Phil. Mr. Landfill, absolutely. I'll just call you Phil. All right, Phil? So that's good. 
Okay, I am out of here. Uh, I want to do this the right way though, so let me uh, let me go ahead and uh, let me let me pop over uh, somewhere and bring this up and let's bring up a little music. There we go. And I am going to get out of here and uh, stay in chat for just a little bit. So if you want to talk in chat, I'll hang out with you. I'll keep this, so in order to keep the chat live, I need to keep the stream alive. So we'll just keep the music going, and uh, I'm not going to use the bug zapper but I'll go back to the thumbnail so retro combs out thank you all for joining really enjoyed you being with me and helping me through this project thank you Matthew you win the star for the day you got us uh, got it loaded so now it's up to me to figure out how to use a lot of Sarah Lex. so talk to you guys later see ya